the system is failing. We're going to have more homelessness, more unemployment, and the government has to print more money. It's a command and control economy where the government tells you everything. I just don't trust our government. You know, and they're going to have to start printing pretty quickly. And the more they print, the less value purchasing power the dollar has, or the loonie, or the yen, or the peso. People are talking about inflation. I think we're in depression right now. And we're going to be a biggest depression in world history. In the 1970s, that's when the world was changing. The biggest bust in the history of the world is coming up. It's pensions. They trusted the government. They trusted their pension would be there, and it's going to go bust. And that's us. We get crushed. Ladies and gentlemen, no introductions today. We have to go over what has been going on. Sam Bankman Freed has been all over the mainstream media yet again. And here we have Jeremy Hogan, XRP Army community attorney, stating Sam Bankman Freed is getting a light cross examination at the New York Times Deal Book Summit and has made at least three incriminating statements so far. His parents are lawyers, and they're allowing him to go on national television exposing information about FTX. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something that is unprecedented, and it makes no sense unless these people were certain that jail time was not in the cards for them. This does not look like somebody that's going to go to jail for stealing tens of billions of dollars. It looks like they're portraying him as someone that's on a redemption tour and just made some honest mistakes. You don't believe me? Listen to this round of applause. On behalf of everybody here and on behalf of the public, I want to thank you for engaging in it at a time, in truth, when I know you've been advised not to. So thank you so very, very much. Um, thank you. <laughs> Sam Bank, be freed, everybody. Guys, let me tell you something right now. This should get you very upset because Lord knows if any of us were to owe $10 on a trade from 2018, we'd be hit with tax penalties by the IRS immediately and agents would pull up at our door. You guys all know this, but here we are, tens of billions gone in consumer funds. Around $10 billion in consumer funds lost, and Sam Bankman-Fried is getting a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, his parents are lawyers. He's met with Gary and tried to propose policy that would not be favorable for crypto in the United States, and he's getting a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Bankman-Fried is one of those people that may have bought himself a get-out-of-jail-free card insurance policy by donating to so many politicians. Sam came out the other day stated he's given money to Democrats and Republicans. Let's see. All this information that'll be coming out over the next couple weeks and months as investigations will occur will give us more insights as to what is or is not true. I'm not here to make assumptions on anyone, and I do believe in due process, and everyone's innocent until proven guilty. However, I'm very frustrated right now. I've witnessed one of the most crippling collapses in crypto history after Terran UST earlier this summer collapsed. The entire world is in a recession. We're seeing leverage exposed within the system. Mass liquidations everywhere. Mass layoffs and mass bankruptcies everywhere. But here we stand. The select few XRP army. Witnessing all the corruption from back with the Ripple SEC case and now FTX. And I think I speak for all of us when I say I'm just frustrated. We have to remember in times like this not to get emotional and what the end game is going to be. The end game is Ripple and XRP adoption. And Ripple's going to get clarity one way or not in the coming weeks or months when it comes to XRP. 
And when that happens, I expect fireworks. When that happens, I also expect a crisis to be taking place in the world. More evidence of that. You could call that a Freudian slip, if you will. Keeps coming out from the heads of these high-level institutions. David Jones, the head of fintech at MasterCard, stated there will be different ways of making payments, but it will take some time, or maybe there will be a world-changing event that will accelerate that. Maybe. This is what I'm going to say. Regardless of whether or not you give a damn about what happens to Sam Bankman-Fried, you need to understand that behind the scenes, Ripple and XRP adoption is accelerating to solve the biggest financial crisis we're ever going to see. Expect blackouts and a crisis to come accompanied with that. And if you do, we'll all be ready for any scenario. Now I'm going to cut today's video short and play you the entire ABC and Sam Bankman Freed interview on live TV. And the reason I'm doing this is so all of you can make your own judgments. He discusses numerous things, including the playing of consumer funds with Alameda and FTX. And what I'll say to all of you is, decide for yourselves what you want to believe, but always know that XRP will be the end result. It gives a lot of peace sleeping at night knowing I'm an XRP holder. And I know all of you feel the same way as well. To my Udemy students, lecture 178 is posted. My declaration to all of my Udemy students. And I hope you all enjoy it. Some people have said they've seen it. Others haven't. Just know that it's there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. A lot of people look at you and see Bernie Madoff. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's who I am at, at all, but I understand why they're saying that. People lost money and people lost a lot of money. And I mean, at the end of the day, Look, there's a question of what happened and why, and who did what, um, what caused the, the meltdown. And I think that is, reads very differently, right? When you, when you look at the classic Bernie Madoff story, there was no real business there. The whole thing, as I understand it, I think, was, was just one, one big Ponzi scheme, right? FGX, that was a real business. He was at the top of the cryptocurrency world. 30-year-old billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried. You just need FTX. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. Super Bowl ads. Yep. Naming yep. stadiums. Crypto Steph Curry. Stadium. Giselle Bundchen. We did a lot of things to try to, uh, to try and bolster our reputation, to try and, you know, help our brand. But in the early morning hours of November 11th, it all came to an end when FTX filed for bankruptcy and Bankman-Fried stepped down as CEO. Amid reports of FTX customer funds being used to pay Alameda research creditors. This confirmed by former Alameda CEO Carolyn Ellison during an early November video meeting with employees. Alameda, the crypto trading firm also founded by Bankman Freed. ABC News reached out to Carolyn Ellison for comment, but has not heard back. One of the reasons FTX went bankrupt is because FTX deposits yep. were used to pay Alameda's creditors. Carolyn Ellison said you knew about that. Is that true? You know, best I can tell, uh, Alameda did have a big position open on, on FTX. Um, that position, uh, I think, was, you know, very over collateralized uh, a year ago. There is a, a total market collapse and, sp you know, specifically large correlated collapse in its assets, you know, over the last month and to some extent over the last year that, uh, you know, threatened that position quite a bit. And I think that's, you know, as best I understand, a lot of what happened there. I, I am no cryptocurrency expert. I'm no finance expert. Yep. But I don't think you answered my question. I always ask, yep. did you know that FTX deposits were used to pay off Alameda creditors? Uh, 
I don't know of FTX deposits being used to pay off Alameda creditors. Are you, uh, which, which creditors are you referring to? Carolyn Ellison said that you all knew that these funds were used, were put into Alameda. They were the funds owned by your depositors. So I can't speak for who knew what. You know, a lot of the customers on FTX did have, you know, borrowers either, you know, in dollars or Bitcoin or, or euros. But as you know, the FTX terms of service yep. tell the people who signed up, none of the digital assets in your account are the property of or shall be or may be loaned to FTX trading. But you're saying that happened. My understanding is a few things happen. The first is there is a margin trading facility on FTX by which users can lend out funds, by which other users borrow funds. And so there are explicit cases where there is, you know, margin extend, where there is borrow lending. If yep. Alameda is borrowing the money that belongs yep. to FTX depositors, that's a bright red line, isn't it? There are a lot of cases where that's actually explicitly part of the programs and that are but happening. Not, not here. Here it late. says that the digital assets may not be loaned to FTX trading. They can't be loaned out. They can't be loaned. Uh, there existed a borrow lending facility on FTX. And, and I think that's probably covered, I, I don't remember exactly where, but somewhere else in the terms of service. But they'd have to approve of that. They're saying they didn't approve of it here. They're so saying you approved of it. If you rewind to you know the beginning of FTX, um, where you know some customers were, you know, uh, I think in line with sort of existing relationships that, that they've had, at least in some cases, wiring money straight to Alameda Research in order to trade on FTX. So on you FTX. do know and you did know that FTX deposits were being funneled to Alameda? So I was vaguely aware that that was how some wires were being sent in the first place. Um, Didn't that set off alarm bells in your head? So there are a lot of people who are involved in that process. And look, I really deeply wish that I had taken like a lot more responsibility for understanding what the details were of what was going on there. I knew that legal was involved. I knew that other groups at the company were involved, that you know, there were agreements drafted up. But you're ultimately responsible. I and mean, ultimately, absolutely. Like I, Look, I should have been on top of this, and I feel really, really bad and regretful that I wasn't, and a lot of people got hurt, and that, that's on me. Here's what Mark Cuban has to say about that. Yep. He said, if I were him, I'd be afraid of going to jail for a long time. At the end of the day, you know, it's not my call what happens, and uh, the world will judge me as it will. Are you worried about going to jail? There are a lot of things that are worrying me right now. Um, and, you know, as best as possible, I'm trying to focus on what I can do going forward to be helpful and, you know, let whatever, you know, regulatory and legal processes are happening play out as they will. I, I do want to move on, but just, just finally on yep. this. This is really a yes or no question. Yep. Carolyn Ellison says you knew that FTX funds were being funnel to Alameda. Did you know that? I knew that there is an open margin position there and that that involved I know, but that's not what I'm borrow. asking. <laughs> if she's in court and you're in court and she's under oath and you're under yep. oath and you're asked, did you know that these funds were being funneled to Alameda? What is your answer? I did not know that there is any improper uh, use of customer funds. You also took out a $1 billion loan. What was that for? That was generally for reinvesting in the company. That was not for, you know, consumption. I, you know, to my knowledge, I have basically nothing left. Um, you know, basically everything I had was invested in the business. I expect I'm going to have nothing at the end of this. I, I think I had $100,000 left in my bank account last I checked. And I, I think I have, you know, uh, one credit card working with that right now. Earlier this summer, you thought you had, what, $32 billion? Probably 20 but uh, a whole lot more than I do now. I can't imagine what it feels like to go from $20 billion to $100,000. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's been a really, it's been a really humbling fall in, in a lot of ways. How do you explain the failure? Was it an 
inattention, arrogance? Um, it's a good question. Was it unethical? Some part of it was just literal distraction. I sh really should have spent some time each day taking a step back and saying, what are the most important things here, right? And like, how do I have oversight of those and make sure that I'm not losing track of those? And frankly, I did a pretty incomplete job at that. I spent a lot less time looking at assets and looking at balances and positions because that's not where revenue came from. And so it, I wasn't seeing as a core business driver, obviously it was a core risk. And that was a huge mistake of mine to not think more about that. that you said one of your great it's, talents in a podcast was managing risk. That's right. And well, it's obviously wrong. Well, I, it's, I think that there is something maybe even deeper wrong there, which was I wasn't even trying. Like I wasn't spending any time or effort trying to manage risk on FTX, trying like, and that, that obviously, that's that a stunning a admission. What? That's a pretty stunning admission. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know what to say. Like what happened happened. And like, if I had been, if I had been spending an hour a day thinking about risk management on FTX, I don't think that would have happened. I think I, I stopped working as hard for a bit. You know, honestly, if I look back on myself, I think I got a little cocky. I made more than a little bit. Um, and I think part of me, like, you know, felt like, um, like we'd made it. As I said, that was a pretty stunning admission. The whole job of the head of a firm like that is managing risk. Risk, risk exactly. And he wanted to, he reached out. He Desperately. Wanted to... he, he went against the, the advice of his lawyers. Uh, he thanked me at the end. We, like I said, we talked for close to two hours, and you saw he didn't flinch no. from the tough questions, but it, even though he had a hard time at times answering them. And, you know, he just wants to speak his mind.